Chapter 2 And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And on the east side, toward the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And Nashon the son of Amminadab shall be captain of the children of Judah. And his host and those that were numbered of them were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar. And Nethanel the son of Zewar shall be captain of the children of Issachar. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab the son of Helon shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were an hundred thousand and fourscore thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies. And the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Elizer the son of Shedeur. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Simeon. And the captain of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel the son of Zurishaddai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, and the captain of the sons of Gad shall be Eliasaph the son of Ruel, and his host and those that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were an hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward, every man in his place by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies. And the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishema the son of Amahud. And his host and those that were numbered of them were forty thousand and five hundred. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh. And the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel the son of Pedazer. And his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Then the tribe of Benjamin, and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abidon, the son of Gideonai, and his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were an hundred thousand and eight thousand and an hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward in the third rank. And, and those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher, and the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pagiel, the son of Ochran and his host and those that were numbered of them were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali, and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira the son of Enan, and his host and those that were numbered of them were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were an hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. These are those which were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their host were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward every one after their families according to the house of their fathers. Chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he, whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less 
is blessed of the better. And here, men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And, as I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If, therefore, perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before, for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath, by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. Good morning, everyone. Today we can certainly say, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Jesus is able to keep us as we lean on him. He watches over us while we sleep and he empowers us each day to live for him. We thank God for each new day and we praise him for this another Sabbath day to gather in his presence to worship him. Today we are focusing on a passage of scripture again in one of our passages for today. That text is Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Hebrews 7 25. The Bible says, Wherefore he, God, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Friend of mine, our topic today is Jesus is praying for me. Jesus is praying for me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now that you will make your word spirit and life. Refresh us, guide us, empower us, and help us to see Jesus once again. For Christ's sake, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. You know, it strengthens us to know that Jesus prays for us and that he ever lives to pray for us. This is tremendous encouragement to anyone who feels like giving up. This, friend of mine, is tremendous encouragement to anyone who feels like giving up today. Jesus is interceding for us, but he is not interceding for us in the sense of appeasing God. You know, God is angry and Jesus is there uh, pleading with God not to be so angry. No, all that God's holy being and righteous government could demand 
was once for all completely and forever satisfied at the cross. We see again all that the broken law could demand was satisfied at the cross when Jesus died for us. And the Bible says that God the Father is also a loving God. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friend of mine, Jesus' intercession on our behalf, again, is not a matter of placating an angry father who wants to destroy us. No, it means that Jesus continually represents us before the Father so that we can draw near through him and that Jesus defends us against Satan's accusations and attacks. John chapter 17 as well as Luke chapter 22 verse 31 to 32 gives an example of Jesus' intercession for his people. Jesus told Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. And Jesus prays to strengthen us in trials and in seasons of attack against Satan's accusations. And Jesus prays to strengthen us in trial and to strengthen us against Satan's attacks and his accusations. Friend of mine, what is Christ doing now? My favorite Bible commentator says he is interceding for us as the prayers of the sincere and contrite ones ascend to heaven. Christ says to the Father, I will take their sins. Let them stand before you innocent. And he, Jesus, as he takes their sins from them, he fills their hearts with the glorious light of truth and love. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24 says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. You see, friend of mine, in his intercession as our advocate, Jesus needs no man's virtue, no man's intercession. Christ is the only sin bearer. Christ is the only sin offering. Prayer and confession are to be offered only to Jesus Christ, who has entered once for all into the holy place. Jesus Christ has declared, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus will save to the uttermost. He will save completely all who come to him in faith. He ever liveth, the Bible says, to make intercession for us. And therefore, friend of mine, and therefore, friend of mine, this, this biblical declaration of Christ's intercession makes of no avail the offering of mass, one of the falsehoods of Romanism. We say that again. Christ's intercession on our behalf makes of no avail the offering of mass, one of the falsehoods of Romanism. The New Advent Catholic Encyclopedia says, the New Advent Catholic Encyclopedia says, in ecclesiastical usage, both words, intercession and mediation, are taken in the sense of the intervention primarily of Christ and secondarily of the Blessed Virgin and the angels and saints on behalf of men. It would be better, the encyclopedia article continues, it would be better, however, to restrict the word mediation to the action of Christ and intercession to the action of the Blessed Virgin, the angels and the saints, end of quote. Friend of mine, that quotation from the Catholic Encyclopedia is unbiblical. Jesus alone is our mediator. Jesus is our intercessor, not angels, not saints, not the Virgin Mary, 
Jesus alone is our intercessor. First Timothy 2.5 says, There is one God and one mediator between God and the men, the man Christ Jesus. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 declares, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So, Jesus is the mediator. Secondarily, the dead cannot intercede for the living. The dead cannot intercede for the living. The Virgin Mary is dead, and all the, the apostles are dead. And nowhere does it say in the scriptures that the saints who are in heaven are praying for us. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5 and 6 speaks of the dead. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything, the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Psalm 146 and verse 4 says, When a man dies, his breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. So Mary is dead, and the saints in heaven like Moses, Elijah, and Enoch are not our intercessors. The Bible is clear there is one mediator. It doesn't say there are many mediators. It says there is one mediator, one intercessor, Jesus Christ. And so the so-called intercession of the saints is the greatest falsehood that can be invented. Priests and rulers have, have no right to interpose between Jesus and the people for whom he has died, as though invested with the Savior's attributes and able to pardon transgression and sin. They themselves are sinners. They are only human. And one day they will see that their deceptive doctrines have led to crimes of every every stripe and type to adultery and robbery and falsehood they are responsible for many terrible wrongs which men have perpetrated upon their fellow men this idea of of saints being able to forgive people article 22 of the anglican church says the roman doctrine concerning the invocation of saints is a fond thing vainly invented and grounded upon no warranty of scripture, but rather repugnant to the word of God. End of quote. Open quote. The Romanish, the Romish doctrine concerning the invocation of saints is a fond thing, vainly invented, and grounded upon no warranty of scripture, but rather repugnant to the word of God. End of quote. That quote is from Article 22 of the Anglican Church. And so we say again, Jesus is our intercessor and mediator. Again, 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 says, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost completely that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Oh, friend of mine, why only one mediator? Why is Jesus our only mediator? Because he alone is equal with God. He alone could be a mediator between God and man, for he possesses divinity and humanity. Oh, friend of mine, Jesus is our intercessor, our mediator. And as we pray today, our prayers go up to him, and he represents us before the Father. Let us pray now as we bring these requests to him. Father, we thank you that we have in Jesus one who speaks for us, one who interprets our requests before your throne. And today we pray for this person who is asking for prayers on behalf of their family, that they will stay under the Lord's protection. And Father, we pray you will fulfill this request on behalf of this family, that you will protect them cover them and may they do nothing that would cause this this divine protection to be removed 
And Father, we're praying for this individual, this husband who says, pray for my wife, my son, my relatives and friends and myself, that we will be in good health and strength and be granted forgiveness of our sins. And so, Father, we pray that you will hear the prayer of these individuals, that this husband, his wife, that this husband's wife, son, relatives and friends would remain in good health and strength. And that as they ask of you themselves too, you will forgive their sins and their shortcomings. Remember, Lord, all of the requests that we mentioned in your presence. We pray the Lord that you will fulfill each one of them in the right way at the right time. Bless these two individuals, these persons, this person who is asking for protection for their family. And this other person who is asking that his wife son relatives and friends remain in good health and strength and that you'll forgive their sins father bless us today thank you dear jesus for being our mediator our representative in heaven hear our prayer today forgive our sins cover us with the righteousness of jesus christ and may we enjoy this sabbath day in your presence is our prayer in jesus name amen and amen